Hey, Sandy. Hi, Jean. Hey, Sandy. Oops. I gotta take Hi, this Jean. off the computer. Hey, Sandy. Oops. I gotta take Hi. it. Oh, I thought I already did that this morning. Hello, Vesta. I'm just getting some things um, in line here. Okay, I think I got everything. Um, hi, Lori. I am going to flip the camera. And do a little bit more flipping. There we go. Good morning. How is everybody? Hi, Teresa. So I hope your, your Thursday morning is going well for you already. I got a phone call from the dermatologist and my margins are clear for the um, basal cell that they took off of my belly. So I'm very happy about that. I, I didn't expect anything less, but, you know, it's always good to have um, that reassurance with a phone call that everything went well. So, um, I don't know why I can't see comments on my phone now, but they are scrolling on the laptop and I cannot keep up. So Janice and Ann, Kathy, Tony, um, if I've missed your name, they're going by so fast I can't keep up. Martha, this is wonderful. Thank you for spending your Thursday with me. And there's Pat. I hope you're excited about this Dresden plate uh, design that happened. Um, it's funny the story behind it because when I was looking at all the quilt patterns, you know, you've got all these um, templates for, for blades and everything. And then going into designing them, they start talking about the degrees of the blades. And, and there's a math equation that you do that will tell you if you divide something by the degrees, it'll tell me how many blades I need. It's a card. You know, I'm not making a 12 inch block. So um, I did a little bit more research and I came across an article from 2011. And the article was promoting these little um, templates that uh, it's a kit that you could buy for the Dresden plate. And the shape of the one template caught my eye. And I'm thinking, I have seen something similar to that before. I've seen it in card making. Now I have to go back and figure out where have I seen this template. So I started going through all my Pinterest boards for different kinds of um quilt patterns or quilt cards and back in the day um I had saved a video from Lisa Curcio where she did a pinwheel block and um the squares you know went around in a pinwheel and it kind of had like a star shape to it and I'm like by golly I think that's similar to this template that I saw that they're selling. So, kept looking, going, digging even deeper. And sure enough, that pinwheel template that she used will work perfectly to create a Dresden plate. So now you will have a template that not only can do the pinwheel, but it will do a Dresden plate as well. I kept working with it and like, okay, so where do I put my paper um, to get the blades? And I figured it out. And I'm so excited to share it with you because after the live, I will post a PDF in the Quilt Cards and More group. And you are going to get a, um, the, the um, patterns that I drew out you're going to get 
three of them. One for a small Dresden, a medium Dresden plate, and a large Dresden plate. And at the towards the end of the live, I'm going to show you two examples that I did. I uh, made a little three by three note card with the small Dresden, and I made another card using the large Dresden plate. So I'm excited to show those to you and to share with you the patterns. So it's really, really exciting. Um, the, the medium Dresden plate is the one that we're going to be working with today. Okay, but then I'm going to show you two other options. And just know that you can go over and you can download that PDF and you can see what you need to do to draw out your pattern to make your own templates that you can save and just pull them out whenever you need them and create a Dresden plate quilt card. So I'm excited. Um, some other news really quick. So yesterday, the last chance sale started happening in the afternoon. These are all the um, items that are retiring out of the current annual catalog. A lot of them are, um, there's some good discounts in there. Also, the March promotion for the 20% off the mini uh, cut and emboss machine and the select dies, that's still going on. So what you may want to do is when you're looking at a bundle, look at them separately because if one or the other is retiring, it may have a sale price attached to it. And by doing them separately, okay, so let's say that the stamp set is retiring and it happens to be one of them that they've discounted. Well, the dies are retiring too, but they're already 20% off with the March promotion. So you're going to get that on top. So when you're looking at a bundle, try to price them out um, separately and see if you get even more of a savings. The uh, two, do I have them here with me? I thought I did. Um, one of the heavily discounted items. Remember when we did the applique, ooh, the faux applique card and I chose to use the Pierced Blooms die set for my flowers and my vine. That is a $37 die set. It's got so many pieces that when I took them, and cut, you know, to put them on magnets. I needed more than one magnetic sheet to hold them all. 50% off. This die set right now, while supplies last, is $18.50. It is like the best deal for that I think in the whole um, retiring list because of how much I use them in my quilt cards. They're also the flowers that I used for um, the little baskets that we did. One of the other die sets that is retiring is the Iconic die set. And that bird right there that I turned into a cerulean warbler, that die set is retiring. It's not on sale, but it is retiring. So... Um, if you've been looking at the Pierced Blooms die set, you will want to get it now. Also, shipping goes up by a dollar from $6.95 to $7.95 for the minimum April 1st. Keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out, should I order now or do I want to wait? Um, shipping does go up the 1st of April. So keep those things in mind. Um, I thought... I'm going to flip the camera around to show you Happy Mail, but I thought there was one more thing on my desk. I guess not. There was something else I thought I had that's retiring, but I don't see it here, so we're not going to bother with that. So I am going to flip the camera around, show you some Happy Mail, and then we're going to get started. So 
again, I'm looking at my phone and all these little things, figuring out how I need to. Looking for my buttons. Hi, Donna and Joanne and Sharon. Sharon, was it you that messaged me asking me where I am? I, I hope it was you and I see that you found me. Hi, Teresa. Okay. Now let's just... Don't want to get anybody dizzy. And there we go. I think I want to bring it in a little bit closer. Bring it down. Okay, looks good on the laptop. Michaeline, hello. Okay, I'm just going to scroll really quick and see who is on that I didn't get to say hi to. Joanne, Doris, I'm so glad you're here. Josephine, Jane, yay. Wonderful. Okay. So, on in front of me are, um, well, this is the card that we're going to do today with a different paper and I have some um, different greenery. But these little trinkets here are what we did on National Quilt Day. So, um, we did a whole bunch of really cool stuff. And the girls have been sharing what they made over in the Quilt Cards and More group. So, um, the first thing that we did is we did six cards with the disappearing nine patch technique. We had three different ways to cut up a nine patch rearrange the pieces and create new quilt blocks and we made them easel cards okay so this was really fun here's another design of the nine patch cut on the diagonal and switching pieces around and then this was yet another one where we sliced and diced and moved pieces from one side to the other to give this um, really thin uh, strip here. Uh, so that was another card. So we did six of those. We made little chirpy doodles that I put on a barn quilt uh, card base. And then a little tag here for the suitcase that we made that can hold our cards um, or other little trinkets that you could send to somebody. So those were the projects for National Quilt Day. I just wanted to show them really quick. We had a lot of fun. I had somewhat of, um, um, I don't wanna call, um, I don't know what I wanna call it, but I made a boo-boo in in my scoring and then it made me start guessing second guessing everything I did uh, for the project but the pattern the PDF is correct it was me my sample piece to get started with I didn't score correctly but it sure put me on the spot in front of everybody and that kind of raised my anxiety a little bit but we pulled through it and we got them done our little suitcases even have little feet on the bottom so it helps protect the cardstock from getting dirty. And then you can always decorate your suitcase with a label and maybe throw some swatches of uh, designer series paper on there to look like patchwork. So it was a lot of fun. We were together a lot on Saturday. <laughs> um, happy Mail. Okay, so I got um, a couple cards that were um, thinking of views um, prior to having that basil cell um, thing cut off. Um, this is such a soothing card. This is from Vesta, and she was just praying for me um, for 
um, that they get all the cancer off. And these colors are so soothing to me. Blue greens are my favorite. And so I wanted to thank Vesta for such a simple soothing card, letting me know that she was hoping all was going to go well. And it did. Really didn't think it wasn't going to, but it's kind of scary when it's your first experience with anything like that. And then Susan Bobak, we are fine liners together under Karen Titus. And we've been helping each other brainstorm things a lot. But she wanted to uh, just send me a note that she was thinking about me and then uh, brainstorming and, and some things uh, as for to pick up our business and, and try new things. So that was a really cute card. And then Vesta sent me the cutest little thank you card. Look at the little pocket card and look at the little bird. We share a love of birds and uh, this little pocket card was a really sweet thank you card. So I wanted to show that. And then my friend Lori and Coco, uh, well, she lives near Co Kokomo, where my sister lives. She lives in Logan's Port. But she sent me a thank you. I shared with, I sent Lori a box of some things that um, I wasn't using uh, to help add to um, her stash of some embossing folders. And so she sent me this really beautiful thank you card. She used the, um, it was the one six by six plus one sheet wonder. Look at how beautiful this yarn is. And the thickness is perfect. The proportions in this card are really beautiful. Um, she personalized it with my name and the thank you. And she's my butterfly girl. Um, she loves butterflies. So very pretty thank you card. But I am just really in love with this ombre uh, yarn there. So thank you, Lori. And then did anybody who got a um, March barn quilt card kit, you, yours may still be getting to you. I don't know why some people get them faster than others, but did you notice what I stamped on the front of your envelopes? Look at this little chirpy doodle. Doris sent me this. And I believe, Doris, was it your niece Robin who found it? And is Robin the your niece who stitched my mug rug? Um, if you're still on here, if you could let us know. But she just thought that I needed this. And it is like the perfect compliment um, to my page. So um, cute little chirpy doodle here. And then look at this stamp set. It's not stamping up, I know, but I have a lot of stamps that are not stamping up. Um, the Birds Return. The stamp has a song of the birds returning. And then look at all these sweet little birds. And on the back, look at the um, suggestion for colors. That looks like a this one here. I don't know if you can see it. This one here looks like a painted bunting. There's your Eastern Bluebird. This looks like one of the um, the tits from um, Great Britain, maybe. Um, and this one here, it didn't pop into my head immediately what it reminded me of, but they gave great color suggestions so that you can color these birds in to match, you know, to to match real bird species. So I just loved them. So thank you, Doris. Um, thank you for your little card kits that you included. So that's it for Happy Mail. Let's say we get started. So I'm going to bring in my bits here. Again, I I changed up the paper um, to create something different. I'm using the Pansy um, designer series paper. You know, we lose all our designer series paper 
when the new catalog comes out. So I am trying to use up DSP that I have. Um, and I really haven't played with the pansies as much as I wanted to. And I've got some of the dye leaves. I want to thank Marilyn for those. Um, yeah, I've just got my bits. What we're going to do first is I want to get my little bit of stamping out of the way. So all I'm going to do for stamping is I'm going to stamp my sentiment. Then we'll move on. Being that this is a photopolymer stamp that I'm using, I'm going to need to give it a little cushion. And I am using the Hello, the small Hello from The Biggest Wish. It's my favorite. Um, one of my favorite sentiment stamps. And it's carrying over. Um, let's see, what color do I want to do this in? I think because Fresh Freesia is going to be my color of my cardstock, I'm going to reach across the camera here real quick and just pull out the ink pad. I've been fighting this pillow that sits behind my back. Every time I stand up, the pillow falls over. So aggravating. Okay, so I'm gonna ink it up. I'm gonna test it first. Ooh, that that'll be pretty on white. And then I'm gonna pull this down to me closer so that I can center it. And still doesn't mean it will be centered, but at least it gives me a better shot. And there's my hello. That's all the stamping that I'm going to do. We'll just set this stuff aside. So we've got that out of the way. Just going to sit that there in front of me. I better move these leaves before I lose them. I don't need that anymore. So let's Grab the two pieces of two inch square cardstock that I had you get ready. This is going to be part of the PDF. And I ask you to use a light color cardstock because I want you to be able to do some writing on your um, template when you're done. And then that way you can see them. So here's our template. What we want to do, and you will do the same thing. Whoops, I think I grabbed the wrong ones. You will do the same thing to create your small and your medium template as we do, or your, me your small and your large as we do for the medium. So I'm only going to demonstrate the one. So what you want to do is you want to lay your first square down to match the square that is square. Okay, don't glue it down, just sit it there. And then you are going to put a little bit of glue on your second piece, just in the center. And what, oh, no, 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 stretch. Down, 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 down. You can't miss it, honey. Get off the keyboard. Um... What we are going to do is we are going to put this on point. We want to make sure our points are landing with the lines. Okay. And we're going to set that right on top of the other one. Now I need to bring this down closer to me. So I'm just going to turn it. And then I just want to make sure my points are lining up on the lines of the grid paper and I highlighted uh, with marker on the template so you could see. They look pretty good and then I'm just going to rub that so that the two of these pieces, oh my goodness, I rubbed a little too hard. Um, 
put these two pieces together. And you just keep turning them until those points are in line with the lines of the grid paper. Just helps keep you square. Okay, so here we have this template. And what you can do is you can write on top of here, medium Dresden plate. This finishes at about <clears throat> two and three quarter inch square. So if you're looking to see if this is the template that you need to fit your project, it finishes about two and three quarter inch square. Uh, this information right here tells me that to make the Dresden plate, I need to draw a three inch square. I am going to draw, I'm going to cut it in half in both directions to create a four patch. So on your three inch square that I had you draw out, you are going to have it at one and a half inches horizontally and then vertically you're going to have it again. Now the other thing that I want you to do <clears throat> is draw a line diagonally to opposite corners in both directions, okay? So you can do that now if you want. Um, the other information that I have on my template is that my um, my designer series paper squares need to be an inch and a half square to fit the four patch. It's just the same dimension as what each one of these four four squares are, okay? So this way you have your information right at your fingertips. The other thing I want you to do, the reason why I chose a light colored cardstock, is because when you flip this over, this is really helpful. In the valleys, in the valleys of your template, you just want to draw a line from this dip to this dip all the way around. Why? Because this is going to help you position your template so that the blade, the points, the blade of, of your blade are landing within the half square triangle that we are going to, that we're going to cut. Okay. Is everything, um, making sense so far? So now we're going to bring in, I'm going to bring in my trimmer and we're going to cut those half, those, um, one and a half inch squares that I told you that you would need. We are going to cut them diagonally to create the half square triangles. So you're actually going to have enough of these to make two Dresden plates because we're only going to use one half of the, uh, you know what, because my scoring blade is right there, I'm going to have to bring this down a little bit. Okay. We're just going to cut all of these on the diagonal. This is such an amazing way to get our blades without having to cut each blade from a blade template. If you're a quilter, you've seen it. You've got these blades that you have to trace around and the whole You know, the name of the game for me is put all your, put all your um, squares down, glue them down, and start chopping up a simple design to create the, the pieces that you want without having to get so fussy. So that's the name of the game. 
And this way, I could not believe worked so well. So I'm just making sure that my points are in my cutting track. And then I like to position the blade over the top and push it down in to help hold the paper and then just go like that. Because if you bring the blade down on the point, sometimes it wants to wrinkle up your, your paper. So we've got all of our half square triangles cut. Now we get to play. Now what you're gonna do is you are just gonna glue, pick the half square triangles that you want I'm using the liquid glue and I like to just paint my glue on. Make sure that any corners or points are going to be well secured and I'm just going to start gluing these down, making sure my lines are straight and I got good points here, which that's just a quilter's thing because we're going to cover that center up with a circle anyway but still once once you've quilted and and you're lining up points it never leaves you okay and then we're going to find something that coordinates well with this triangle And then just work your way around your block. Putting down those half square triangles. Oops, almost the wrong way. This block is forgiving if your points don't line up so well in the center because we're gonna cover it up with a circle. But um, if you're wanting to really get them in there good, there's nothing wrong with practicing that. Now, the Dresden plate pattern was really popular with in the 1920s and 30s feed sacks, um, 30s repro reproduction fabrics. Um, I think that might have been why I chose to go with this designer series paper because with the gingham and the softer colors, I thought it might just be a good, a good fit. And I thought I had another gingham that, okay, that's going to be a gingham there. And I'm going to try and not repeat. I'm kind of also going pattern, um, like pattern solid, pattern solid, just to um, not put two of the same things together. I want to be able to show a lot of difference. We need something darker right here. So let's bring in this one. Make sure that your pieces are up against each other really nice so you have nice seams. The one thing we don't have to be real, too concerned about is if our if our um, half square triangles fall short of our boundary of our grid, we're going to be cutting this out with scissors and we're going to be getting rid of that outside. So um, you don't have to get too hung up on that. So there is some forgiveness here. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's okay because I wanted this on top anyway. Until Stretch was up here. He left behind a little blade of fur.
And then this last one, what do I have left here that I could? I haven't used these yet. I don't think I want to put two ginghams together. So we'll just go ahead and bring in this poppy. Not poppy, pansy. Okay. So there we have our half square triangle four patch. The amazing thing is when you set your template on here and what you're going to be lining up is your horizontal and your vertical lines with the horizontal and vertical lines that you drew on here to make the four patch. Your blades are landing inside each designer series paper, making your little kite there or your blade, and you didn't have to fussy cut anything. So I'm gonna let, I'm just gonna set this aside so that glue can dry, okay? And give that a chance to dry. And I'm gonna bring in my card base. Some of this stuff I did ahead of time, okay? So I have um, my card base. I've really been on a roll with liking my cards to be white. I don't know why I go through phases like that. So this is my card base. It's um, eight and a half, eight and a half by five and a half, and then scored at four and a quarter. My layering piece, here I use Knight of Navy. I chose Fresh Freesia. Now, um, what I wanna do is I'm gonna punch out my button for the back of my card. This isn't gonna, these punch outs aren't gonna be seen. So this is a really good way to utilize some of that area and then I've decided that the center of my um, Dresden plate I want that circle to be fresh freesia too so I'm just going to bring in my one inch punch and punch that out and it went on the floor sorry if my hair was getting in the way um, so I'm just going to punch those out from the middle because we're not going to see those anyway. And we'll come back to those pieces. So this is going to be a layer. Um, I went ahead and I used the Stitch Greenery die on my white piece that is four by five and a quarter. The layering piece is an eighth of an inch bigger, so that would be four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And we can go ahead and we can, we can attach that. Just want to make sure that you don't get glue anywhere near where your, uh, whatever you punched out is going to be because it'll, It'll transfer to whatever is underneath. And because of all the little bumps from the dye, I'm just going to give this a really good press so that that liquid glue seals these two pieces of cardstock together. Uh, so I'm going to set that aside for now, and I've got a piece of designer series paper that's four by five and a quarter, and I am going to go ahead and put that on the back of my card base. I like, I like to um, put color on the backs of the cards. I think the back of the card should be as pretty as the front. And... It helps use up designer series paper. I love gingham. And while we're working with that, I'm going to take that button that I punched. I've got my little signature 
stamp here. I'm gonna make my little badge is what I call it. Or button. I think I use the word button more than badge. I'm gonna put that in the center so that my back will be finished. Okay. Oh, wrong direction. I'm going portrait, not. There we go. That was a good save. <laughs> I would have left it. Um, but good save, Julie. Good save. Okay. So now let we gave that glue a little time to dry. So take your template and you're going to need a pencil or something um, that will show up on your paper because we're going to trace around this. So again, I'm going to line up my horizontal and my vertical lines with the seams of the designer series paper the half square triangles and you just got to keep rotating around until they line up pretty good. They may not always be perfect, but you can get it to line up. I'm making sure that my blades are hitting inside of the DSP. And now I'm just going to trace around my template. If you've got any dark designer series paper just make sure you can see that pencil line you could always use you could use something different than a pencil because you can always cut your lines off oops okay and so now if you can see here are my blades and now all you're going to do is you're going to cut these out and your point should fall right on that valley seam let's just cut that off there I'm just going to cut them out You might want to save those little diamonds if they're they're perfect. You can use those somewhere else in in a design. I'm going to come in from this angle and cut these out. Is this not the easiest way to do a Dresden plate ever? No fussy cutting and then hoping that your sides will line up. Because when you did that half square triangle four patch, all your seams were already matched up to each other. This was like amazing to me. So here we have our Dresden plate. And before I glue my center on, and your circle can be whatever size circle you want. I went with a one inch. I wanted it to look like it was stitched, but none of my circle stitched dies were small enough. So what I did was then I brought in my piercing mat. I laid that down. And I'm going to use the piercing end of my take your pick tool. If you don't have this tool, this was Stampin' Up's version that when I first signed up, I don't know how I bent it, but I did. There's, there's this old one. 
if you have any kind of a piercing tool, you can use a needle or whatever. But I'll go ahead and use the take your pick tool. And then look what I found in my stash of Stampin' Up! stuff. This, for those of you who have been around or in Stampin' Up! for a while, you're going to recognize this set. I don't know how old it is. But this was from Stampin' Up! And there's um, a really hard mat for like that you can cut on like a self-healing mat. There was this padded uh, one for piercing. And then look at all these little holes. If you wanted to be perfect, you could put this on there and keep rotating it. But I found this in all of my Stamping Up stuff. I don't know how old this is. If anybody knows, share that with me because... I'd like to know how long I've been holding on to it and just not utilizing it. So I'm just going to go around and try to be even, but just make my own stitch holes. Doesn't have to, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but try to keep. your holes the same width away from the edge and it really helps if you just keep turning your circle as you go that little square thing if you wanted to be precise and all of these little holes were like an eighth of an inch apart from each other you could do that but here I've created my own stitching okay thought that was a cute little tip to show you and then I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to glue that down where is my silicone mat the liquid glue gives you a chance to kind of move it around make sure that your blades are all the same length and then just give it a rub. Now, if you wanted to, you could run your Dresden plate through an embossing folder. I, In my card, I'm letting the background embossing, whether you use an embossing folder or the, the um, stitch greenery die, I'm letting that do just all the work. That be my only like quilting on the card. So here you have your Dresden plate flower. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but when it's like this, where I have my two, my points horizontal and vertical, I see the square. And for whatever reason, I don't want to see the square in a square. So if I turn this just a bit, then my eye starts moving in a circle. Is it just me? Or can you see that? Where if I turn it just a bit, I lose the square in a square. And I just start seeing the like the fan. Or my eye starts moving in a circle. I'm going to want to do that when I place it on my embossed layer. So I don't want it to look square in a square. I want to just twist it a little bit so that my eye starts spinning with the blades. It could just be a Julie thing. I don't know. <laughs> you let me know if that makes any sense to you or that's the overthinker that's coming out in me, okay? Um, right now I'm looking at where it's at. I know that I need to say, you know, where am I going to put my sentiment? Because then that leaves me room for my greenery. So, being that the leaves that I chose aren't as long as the pierced, pierced blooms, these um, have five leaves on them. And then I use just the, the dies that have the two leaves and tucked them in where I felt like I needed to even out the pattern. Because these dies are not quite as big, 
I might want to play with that first and then see where I want my sentiment at. So if we put, so you're just going to be playing with your greenery. Oh my Lord, did you hear that stomach? Do I have, four? I don't have four of those. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my um, Dresden plate up with dimensionals. So I just want to play with like, where do I want these leaves to fall? And I've got some extra ones that maybe... Look at that. And then if I lay, if I put that down there, I think I can move them out a little bit more, take up some space. I think I'm going to put my sentiment down here towards the bottom. So that means I could move this up. I think I'm going to go just like that. So now that I know where my my leaves are going to be, then I'm just going to go ahead and, and glue them down. And if you're strategic with your dimensionals, you'll still be able to tuck some leaves underneath the quilt block if you feel that you, you just need to add a little bit more. This will be like right here. I'm just going to lay that one right on top of that one. One more. And that one's down. I'm also going to pop up my sentiment uh, with dimensionals, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. I just wanted to know. I think I'm going to center this one. And so now coming in with my Dresden plate, then it's just like, where do I want these colors to land? Do I want the greens not in the greens? And again, I'm going to just off kilter it a little bit. Okay, let's get the dimensionals on here. Again, just be don't load it up so much with dimensionals that you can't tuck something in if you decide that you want a little extra greenery. Okay, and then take the backs off. And again, we're just going to, wish I would have looked at this. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to go like this. And I'm just going to position it so I, my eye wants to spin. So there's my flower. And now I'm going to go ahead and put this on the front of my card base. And then I'm going to put my, um, my sentiment on, pop it up. I just think 
that this is the prettiest card. This this quilt pattern. These are just making really pretty cards that you could make a set to give to someone and change out. Like have a couple happy birthdays, maybe a thank you, um, thinking of you. But wouldn't these be really pretty to box up to somebody? Give it as a gift and then they get to spread the love when they send the card to someone else. Just very, very pretty. These would make really pretty Mother's Day cards. If you um, still have your moms or daughters, anyone who's a mom, these would make really pretty Mother's Day cards. And then I'm going to put the hello right here. I just noticed that I stamped this on. I think this is shimmery white instead of basic white, but I'm not fussing about it. I'm going to put three of these on the back. And then put the hello. And then the only thing left to do is add these are my favorite. These are the polished dots. They're in the new mini catalog. And what I love about these is, to me, these are like dew drops. So I want to put some dew drops on my leaves. Because this is so big, I might go, I know I'm going three, but I might go with five. Um, I'm going to put a larger one. I want to bring my eye out to here. So I think I'm going to put a dew drop right on that leaf. And then I think I want to put a smaller dew drop. Maybe inside my, my center here. Why don't you want to stick? There you go. And let's do another small one. I'm going to have to order more of these. I'm using them up really quick. Um, maybe, hmm. Where do I want this to land? Maybe I want one down here near my hello. There. But I went with three. I could go back and put more on there if I want to. Um, again, I could have maybe run my Dresden plate through the subtle embossing folder. Something that's not going to compete with the um, whatever you choose for your quilting on your uh, base here. Um, it's, it's up to you. Maybe I could have just ran the center. But the thing is, if you're going to emboss your center... You're going to want to do the embossing first because if you do your stitching, then when you run it through the plates, you might lose those. But I mean, it's, it's up to you on just how you want to use it. But this is the medium Dresden plate. I hope you like it. Again, be sure to write your information on your template because... The, what you need to know is on there. You can word this any way that you want so that you understand what you need to make the pattern. Um, it's really helpful to draw these lines from your valleys across from each other so that you can help line that up with the um, seams of your four patch half square triangles, okay? Um, so what I've done is... I just started putting everything any, everywhere. So here is my large. There's my small. Oh, my tummy. And my medium. And I can keep these templates somewhere in my crafting um, area so that when I want to make a Dresden plate, I just pull out the, the template and go to town then um the other patterns look like this 
So I kind of changed up the color. So, and this is just so that you can see that you want to have your, the tips of your blades falling inside the, the half square triangle. You don't want them hitting on the seam here. You want the point inside the half square triangle, half square triangle. So I will load this PDF after the live. Here's your three different sizes so that you all can go to town. I know you will. I can't wait to see what you create. But let me show you what I did with the other sizes. So there's our medium. The small. I had the little three by three envelopes so I cut a three inch by six inch piece of basic white thick and I scored it at three inches and created a little tiny three by three little you know just a little card that I can accompany a gift so that's my little that's my small Dresden put in um my sentiment. These are those little diamonds I was telling you about that when you cut out your Dresden plate, you can use the little diamonds and accent your corners. And then I decorated the back. So that's the small. And then my large Dresden, I cut it in half. So I cut the large Dresden in half right on a seam and I split it so that I have one half here, one half here, and then added my greenery and my little dew drops. So those are the three Dresden plate sizes that, and you're gonna get those in the templates. So I hope you love this design. I was so excited. I could not even, I couldn't contain it. I thought, nope. As, as exciting as it is, and I want to share it with them, I, I can't do it right now. I want it to be a surprise. And then I thought, oh, I can't stand it. So I'm going to give them a little bit of a teaser. <laughs> oh, thank you for the hearts. I love that. That lets me know that you like it. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Mary. Welcome. Where are you watching from? Uh, the large, Sharon. Okay, good question. Your large Dresden plate is going to finish about three and a half inches. Okay, so this will be about three and a half inches. The medium, again, was about two and three quarters. The small is about two inches. It'll fit right inside your four patch. It could be a little tight, but it, um, if I would have made the four patch any bigger, we were just wasting designer series paper so the small ones a little bit of a tight fit and then the bigger you go you've got some more room here are those little diamonds that's where they get created is when you cut these corners off you get those little diamonds so the templates will have all the information you need um, in the pdf it tells you what it finishes at approximately so this is going to have all your information and you can write on your template whatever information you want it to hold because only you understand your own process on how you uh, write things down. Okay? So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see your creations over in the group Quilt Cards and More. If you haven't joined our private group yet, please go over and request to join. That's where we do all of our sharing of um, what everybody else creates. And you, it's amazing the spins that come off of the initial design because everyone is so clever and creative. Uh, your wheels start spinning and everyone is really, really good about sharing the, their process. So I will see you next next thursday twice we'll have a morning facebook live and then the barn quilt put together is thursday evening so you're gonna see me twice next thursday 
Oh, oh, glad, Mary, I'm glad that you love it. I just, I'm still in awe that we don't have to cut each one of these blades out. Hope that our angles are right so that all of these fit perfectly together. That was taken care of when you glued down your half square triangles onto the four patch. Took that part right out of it. Now all we have to do is trace, cut it out, and there you go. So um, again, hi Eileen. Um, thank you for joining me. I will see everybody next week.